Hello everybody, in this video, I'm going to be reacting to some financial advice videos on YouTube. Let's get started. Let's start off with this one. The best financial advice you'll hear today. Let's see what they got to say. What is the best financial advice you've ever received? Invest in assets, not liabilities. What is the worst financial advice you've ever received? The way to build wealth is saving your money. So true. Third question. What is something you used to value that you don't anymore? Material things. What is something that you think people think is important when it comes to money, but you realize that's not really the right focus? Net worth. Net worth is a crap indicator of real success. What is the... There are some things that I agree with and some things that I don't really agree with. So, for example... One thing he said was that the best way to build wealth is by saving money. And that's, you know, a bad financial advice. I agree. I mean, everyone in the financial YouTube space, they kind of know that in order to really grow your money to a really big amount, you need to take some risk and invest your money. And yes, it is riskier to, you know, put your money into the market because there's going to be times when the market will not do so well, right? So there is higher risk in investing your money, but overall, I think people in general have a much better chance of actually building their wealth and getting 20%, 40%, 60%, etc. over a period of time by investing their money rather than saving. Now, something he also talked about was not valuing material things. And this is something that I hear so many people say, oh, material things don't matter, you know, it doesn't matter. I think that to an extreme, like if we're talking about Lamborghinis, Louis Vuitton handbags and things like that, okay, those material things, they might not matter. But for me, when I hear material things, that includes things like glasses, water bottles, a USB cord, uh, you know, small little things that you buy, those are still material things to me. So at the bottom, right, the inexpensive material things that really add comfort to your day-to-day -day life and make things easier for you, I think those are good. Uh, it's good to have those type of material things. I think it's good to be intentional with the material things that you buy. So even if something is expensive, if it's something that you really need in your life, if it allows you to live comfortably in one way or another, then hey, what's wrong with that type of material things? I think it really matters what exactly we're talking about when we're talking about material things because there's a lot of little things in my life that I consider, you know, materialistic, but they improve my life by a lot. So I'd rather have them than not have them. And something else that he talked about, ah, uh, yes. So he doesn't think that net worth is a good indicator for financial success. But the question was really about what do people find important that is really not important. Now, I do agree that net worth, let's say you have a million dollars of net worth, right? However, you got to a million dollars down from five million dollars. <laughs> That's horrible, right? But if you have a million dollars, up from 200,000, that's really, really good. So it really depends on the context and the way we're looking at it. Net worth just by itself doesn't really tell much of the story. It matters where you were, where you're at now, how much your gains were over time. As far as being important, I think net worth is very important. It might not be a good indicator of how successful you are at, you know, managing your finances or growing your money. However, Net worth is still important, even though it's not an indicator for how successful someone is at investing their money or growing their portfolio. It is still important. If you have $5 million versus having a net worth of $500, that's a huge difference. And it makes a gigantic difference in someone's life. So I do think that net worth is important, even though it's not an indicator for how good someone is at financial literacy. All right, let's look at another video. How about, 
How about this one? Worst financial advice ever? Let's see what he says. Worst financial advice ever. You should get into day trading and scene. Worst financial advice. Wow. That was short and to the point. All right. Day trading, my experience with it. I have tried day trading a little bit when my account was very, very low. And there's a lot of limitations. Like you have to have a certain amount or you're uh, flagged as a pattern day trader. I mean, there's just so many rules. And honestly, it's more work. Like for me personally, most of the time I'm sitting back and doing nothing. Like I'm not actually actively doing anything. And that's a lot less work than having to actively trade every single day. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather sit back, relax, and just see what happens instead of actively having to invest and trade stocks and options every single day. Not only that, but honestly, I haven't seen a lot of people on YouTube who make content showing how many gains they've made from day trading long term. Now, of course, you're going to get people here and there who show how much they made from day trading in a particular day or in a particular week. But if we're talking long term, like over several years, I don't see a lot of people consistently day trading over several years and doing very, very well with it. Most of the time, the financial advice that I've seen is buy and hold. And that works for a whole lot of people. Warren Buffett himself, he advocates a lot for holding on to the S&P 500 and just sitting back and waiting for years and years. And that's one of the best ways to grow your money. So day trading, actively trading during the day, every day, um, it's just not for me. I'd rather just have my positions and then sit back and do nothing. All right, let's watch some more. All right, let's watch this one from Dave Ramsey. Now, I know Dave to be someone who is very anti-credit card. So let's hear what he has to say in this video. If you use your credit cards, you do not want to be rich. Well, anytime you say something about debt, people send it to me. Look, right, what, Cuban, I know. look I, what Cubans say. Yeah. Look at what Cubans and say. And vice versa. Yeah, so, so cut, cut up your credit cards. If you use a credit card, you don't, you don't want, to want to be rich. Be rich. Yep, that's I like my that line. line. That's a good line. That's my favorite line. I tell it to people all the time. People then uh, they ask me, well, where's the best place to invest? I said, your best place to invest is to pay off all your credit cards and burn them. Because your credit card, you know what your return is, right? If you get off, you know, you're paying... 15 20 percent interest if you pay that down you just earn 15 or 20 percent folks i've told you a hundred times and uh forbes 400 400 wealthiest people in north america when surveyed asked what's the way to build wealth what's the number one way to build wealth 75 percent of wealthy people not your broke brother-in-law with an <laughs> opinion but wealthy people say get out of debt yep. and stay out of debt yep because it gives you power over your largest wealth building tool which is your income if you use your okay here's the thing they're talking about using credit cards in a way where you're actually carrying a balance and paying interest on it. 15%, 20%, even 30% interest on some credit cards. Now, if you're using credit cards that way, then yeah, that's a, that's a lot of interest to be paying on your credit cards over time. However, if you're not paying interest and you're just simply using your credit card and paying it off every month, and getting rewards and points from your credit cards, that's a good way to use credit cards. I've gained a lot of money from my rewards points and sign up bonus offers from my credit cards. For example, recently I opened up a credit card that got me $200 cash back just for meeting a certain uh, amount of spending. So I spent a uh, $1,000 in the first three months and I got $200 back. And that's money that I would have spent anyway. So I'm not spending an extra $1,000 that I wouldn't have spent. I just regularly spend money on things anyways. Groceries, food, gas. So in that situation, it's simply an extra $200 that I got as a sign-up bonus for my credit card. So there are good ways that you can use credit cards in order to build wealth and gain more money. But 
carrying a balance and having to pay 30% interest, that's very bad financially. So it depends on the context of how you're using your credit card. If you're carrying a balance and paying 30% interest, that's really bad. However, if you're taking advantage of credit cards and getting rewards points, miles, cash back, things like that, that's very good. So it depends on how you're using your credit cards. Let's watch one more. All right, let's watch this last video right here. It says bad financial advice. You have to be very careful who you're taking your financial advice from. I see so many clowns on TikTok promoting different ways for you to get rich very quickly or investing in things like life insurance or investing in real estate or investing in stock market and trading, you know, being able to get these crazy rates of returns and these crazy projections. I'm not saying that any of those are bad. I'm just saying you have to be realistic and you have to educate yourself. If anything were that easy, then we'd all be doing it and we'd all be getting rich. It's just just not that simple and nine times out of ten when you jump into something like that without the education you end up paying for that education through the losses that you take from whatever investment vehicle it is you have to be very careful oh yeah when you lose money it's a very good teacher because <laughs> you don't forget you're like oh man I lost money doing this I'm gonna learn from it okay so I do think that in most cases, if people are preaching about easy ways to gain a million dollars in two years or how to get a 40% return every single year indefinitely, most likely it's too good to be true. Now, most people would agree that investing in the S&P 500 or broad market index funds, things like that, and just simply holding on to it for a long time. That's the best way to grow your money. And Warren Buffett, I think he had like a challenge where he challenged active investors to beat the S&P 500 over a certain period of time. And most active investors, they were not able to beat the returns of the market. So the fact of the matter is, most likely, the best way to grow money is to simply hold on to the S&P 500 and just sit back and wait. So there's tons of evidence to back up the idea that the best way to grow your money is to hold on to something long term and then just sit back and watch it grow. Instead of chasing these very quick, super high gains in a short period of time, most of the time it's just simply too good to be true. So I would say growing your wealth takes a bit of patience. You have to be willing to wait a long time for something to grow over time. If you're looking for a way to make a million dollars in two years, I'm sorry, but most likely that's not going to happen. Most likely you're going to have to sit back and wait a long time in order to see the big gains. All right, I'm done reacting to videos for now. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you. Bye.